Madam Deputy Speaker, may I take questions 6 and 7 together, please? Please proceed. Since January 2021, there have been five fatal work-related traffic accidents involving food and goods delivery platform workers. The Workplace Safety and Health Council is working with platform companies to review work processes to enhance the safety of platform workers on the road to prevent accidents. More details will be shared when ready. But in parallel, the Advisory Committee on Platform Workers is looking at strengthening financial protection in case of work injury for delivery persons, private hire car drivers and taxi drivers. The Advisory Committee has been engaging platform companies and platform workers on the provision of financial protection to platform workers who are injured at work. Such protection is provided currently to employees under the Work Injury Compensation Act. The implementation of such work injury financial protection framework would require the mandatory reporting of work injuries to ensure platform workers receive the necessary compensation. Dr Tan Wuming. I thank the Minister for his answer. I have a number of Clementi residents who work as delivery riders. They and their families, as well as some of their customers, are troubled every time a delivery rider dies on the job. I filed two PQs, and I hope Madam Deputy Speaker will allow me three supplementary questions. First, can the Minister confirm that the Work Injury Compensation Act, that weaker policy intent, is to cover persons on flexible working arrangements, and if so, why not cover flexible workers in a gig economy? Second, does the Minister agree that there is policy space to improve protection for these delivery riders to close what may be a perceived policy lacuna to ensure a fairer outcome when a delivery rider dies on the job working for a gig platform? And thirdly, does the Minister also agree that this policy improvement has broader implications for workplace safety in Singapore. For example, what happens if tomorrow a marine manufacturing or construction company decides to gazette their Singaporean workers as self-employed or independent contractors? They would need protections too. In summary, Madam Speaker, as one resident said, no company should ever be allowed to send a message that when a worker dies, it's you die, your problem. Because when a worker dies on the job, it is everyone's problem. Thank you. SMS. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I thank the member for his uh, three uh, clarifications. Uh, indeed, the issues he raised are also issues that the Advisory Committee on Platform Workers uh, have been deliberating on. And certainly, you know, every worker, every death at work is one death too many. And we have been working very closely with employers, including platform companies, to make sure that some of these safety measures at work are looked into. And as I said in my main reply, uh, the, the Workplace Safety and Health uh, Work Group is looking at this and will announce more measures when ready. His first question on uh, why is it that WICA, uh, Workplace Injury Compensation Act, is uh, applicable for flexible arrangements, and so why not for workers who are working flexibly as a gig worker? Uh, the underlying reason is because gig workers, by definition, are self-employed persons, and self-employed persons are not covered under the Employment Act. But having said that, the advisory committee, having consulted widely, um, is looking at this issue from the perspective that self-employed workers in the gig economy may be subjected to management controls by the algorithm and the platforms, in which case they are somewhat a little bit more employee-like. And therefore, we are looking closely to see whether the Workplace Injury Compensation Act can be applied also to gig workers to provide them a lot more financial protection in, when they are injured at, in, in, term, in terms of their work. The advisory committee is also taking a principle to look at whether a gig worker, if he's injured at work, providing services to people, but the nature of work could well be similar to another worker doing delivery work as an employee. And in that sense, in principle, there should be no differentiation whether the person's life is worth more or less, just because he's being engaged in a different form of employment. So by 
providing some form of equal principle in terms of protection using the Workplace Injury Compensation Act, we hope to actually cover some of the vulnerabilities of this segment of workers to make sure that if they are injured or suffered a death in the course of their work, some financial compensation that is commensurate with the kind of work they do will be provided for them as well. His third question on um, what happens if companies were to reclassify employees as gig workers and therefore attempting to circumvent some of the benefits or rights that employees enjoy. Uh, I think in this case, there is no single test that is able to use to actually uh, classify whether the, you know, a, a worker has been reclassified. What is important is to look at the nature of the engagement between the company and the worker. Uh, for example, if the company has, by the nature of the work that this person is doing, has actually to provide a workplace, has to provide an equipment, has to provide the kind of jobs to be given to this worker, and there is an expectation for the worker to perform certain KPIs, for example. In that case, that relationship is more akin to an employer-employee relationship, and the company will then be expected to provide employee benefits to this worker under the Employment Act. It does not matter whether this person is a full-timer or part-timer, or whether in the contract itself, the company claims that this person is self-employed. So in adjudicating such disputes, we will look at actually the nature of the engagement and the relationship between the worker and the company to make judgment. Workers, I think, if they take on any employment with any company, they should look closely at the terms of contractual agreement they sign with the company before they actually engage with the company. If they are not clear in, in their terms of employment, they can seek clarification with TADM, the Tripartite Alliance for Dispute Management, uh, to make sure that they understand the terms of the employment and what they are signing up for. So this is the approach that MOM will take. Uh, as I said, there's no one-size-fits-all test to be sure whether the engagement is a service for contract, uh, a contract for service or a contract of service. We look at the relationship of the engagement. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Pritam Singh. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Just a quick question for the Senior Minister of State. When SMS announced the formation of the Advisory Committee uh, last September to look at um, savings of uh, gig workers and uh, 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 the injury framework. Um, SMS, I believe, also announced that the report of the committee would be ready in the second half of this year. Uh, is the committee on track to uh, release its report shortly? Thank you. SMS. Uh, Madam, the committee is still uh, proceeding with its work and we do hope to finish the work uh, towards the end of the year. Um, like I said, the work is a complex one because it involves discussing with many different stakeholders. The workspace for platform worker is a very diverse one. Uh, there are different types of archetypes and profiles of people who engage in platform work. Platform companies also serve a diverse segment of consumers. So I hope the members will give us uh, uh, the space and the time to continue to engage widely and discuss with the stakeholders. Thank you.